Well, I'm currently working on an online game demo sponsored by Herrick's Lab, the creators of Nakama. And I want to change the color picker UI that we have here. So you have three sliders, red, green, green, blue, to pick a character color. First, some colors you can pick are a bit too dark, making your character fade with the background. Then it's not the greatest UI. So here's what I want to do. I want to generate a grid of buttons that allow you to select a swatch. Each swatch on the screen is generated via code and it's a flat button with a color rectangle inside of it. Now, the thing is, I want to generate that palette in the editor so I can design my UI based on the size of this palette and not have to play the game every time to be able to see it. And it's super easy to do that programmatically in Godot. It's, this is one of the program's strengths and I want to show you how to do that. So first, the palette. I found it on the low spec website. It's pair 36 and it's the one we use for our projects at GD Quest for our tutorials mostly. So I'm going to copy all the names of the colors there to show you how I'm generating it from the code. So I have an array with the list of the colors and I've made it with Emacs. So I'm show, going to show you how, right? I copied the colors from the website there and I'm using a command that you have in Emacs or Vim called norm or normal. Uh, you can see it at the bottom of the screen and there I can say, go to the start of the line, surround um, until the end of the line with quote and then you're going to go to the end and add a comma, a trailing comma. So I press enter and I get just that. From there, I can select the entire region and surround it with the brackets and write constant colors equal. There you go. And so I don't format it by hand. I then call the GDScript formatter that is going to clean up the code for me. So I had already done that, but it's just to show you, it's in part why uh, some of us use other editors than the one built into Godot, right? But once you have that, you can fold it. And in my ready function, I have a loop that's going to create swatches. So it takes each color in the colors there and it creates a new swatch. The swatch is a scene that uh, PicDev created for us, right? It's a button with the color rectangle. And it has a color property that allows you to update the color of the swatch. So for each color string, we create a new swatch. We assign it the color string, which updates the color of the rectangle and add it as a child. And I want to do that, but in the editor. To do so, I can add the tall keyword and that keyword will make the code run in the editor. And you think I'm adding the node as a child, so I should see it in the scene as a child. I have to reopen the scene, color selector to be able to see that. And the nodes are added to the scene, but they're not visible in the scene tree. And if you go to the output, uh, you don't see errors here, but if you save and go back or you remove the code, the nodes still aren't there. This is because in order for Godot to save nodes in a scene, you have to assign the root node or a node in the scene as their owner. And that way they will be serialized. That is to say, saved to the disk or converted to, to text data with the parent node. So the way you do that is after you add the child, very important, the node must be already in the scene tree. You say, um, I'm going to take, so my swatch call set owner and I'm going to, I, I can't say directly sell. I can't say this node, um, this instance, I have to say get tree to get the scene tree. And I'm going to go with the edited scene root. So it says, uh, set the owner of the swatch to be the root of the scene here. So I'm going to reopen color selector and you can see all my swatches in there. So I 
I'm now able to save that. So I'm going to remove the tool keyword, my colors, and that generating code, right? Um, from there, I have to update that code saying for swatch in get children, like so, and I'm going to connect them so I can update the color that the user selected whenever you click on one of the buttons. I can also remove that first statement. So I added some temporary code and I got this, my color swatch. Now, the big advantage of that is that I can resize my UI. I can now center it on the screen or say, I want you to use the full rectangle. And if you don't center, what I can do is add a center container that I'm going to set as the scene root. There we go. I'm going to make it full rectangle. And now my swatches are centered in that container, on the screen, wherever I want them to be. I can also play a bit with the columns in my grid container. So I can say I want six. You see the reason and the potential of that change. And it just took me two minutes, three minutes to generate these things by code. Also, of course, I can now uh, select the swatches directly in the editor, remove them if I want, undo, etc. This is extremely powerful. I really invite you to play with the tool mode in Godot so you can do those kinds of things as well. I hope you like the video. With that, be creative, have fun, and let's see one another in the next one. Oh, and of course, if you have questions, please ask them in the description below. Bye-bye.